Hello everyone. How are you all? After a long time we are going to meet together with the help of this video and I hope you all are fine and studying at your home and utilizing this lockdown situation not only for your academics as well as to enhance your extra co-curricular activities too. So this is my first video for you guys from class 10. So I welcome you all and today I am going to start the first chapter in your biology book that is for life processes. But students I am not going to start from very beginning of the chapter because before this lockdown situation we have already completed few of the topics in this chapter like what are life processes and their examples and uh, what is nutrition process, what is autotrophic mode of nutrition, photosynthesis process, equation of photosynthesis, light and dark reactions and uh, requirements for photosynthesis and their experiments too. So today I am going to start the next mode of nutrition that is heterotrophic nutrition. So guys from your previous knowledge you know hetero means others and troph means nutrition. So heterotrophic nutrition is the mode of nutrition in which the organisms derive their nutrition from the other's body like all the animals which you are observing in your surrounding including humans we all are dependent on the other animals for our food for our nutrition and hence such type of organisms are known as heterotrophs. So on the basis of food obtaining methods obtained by the organisms heterotrophic nutrition is classified in three groups holozoic, saprophytic and parasitic. So we are going to discuss the first mode of nutrition that is holozoic. Students you can see two words are here holo and joikos which are derived from the Greek language where holo means whole and joikos means animals. So the organisms which are going to ingest the food from the external environment into their body and then they are going to digest and absorb the nutrients they represent such type of method that is known as holozoic nutrition. Examples are humans and most of the animals in our surrounding which are going to take the food from their surrounding whether in solid, liquid or gaseous form and then inside their body the digestion process will take place. Next method is saprophytic where sapro means rotten and phyto means plants. So these are basically the plants which are going to derive their nutrition from the dead and decaying matter and hence they are going to first digest the dead and decaying matter by releasing enzymes from their body. So the digestion process will take place outside and then after digestion they will only absorb the nutrients in their body. So such type of nutrition is represented by bread mold and mushroom and you all are knowing these examples. So the last mode of nutrition that is what parasitic where para means other and site means food. So such type of nutrition is represented by organisms which are known as parasite and these organisms derive their nutrition by living inside or on the body of other organisms which are known as host. So parasites get their nutrition from the others by living inside or on the body of other living beings but they never kill their host. Parasites may be of two types on the basis of their presence if the parasites are present on the body of the host they are known as ectoparasite like you have seen leech and lice whereas if the parasites are going to present inside the host body they are known as endoparasite like you have seen ascaris the worm that are present in a small intestine of babies and plasmodium the parasite of malaria which you can see that is flowing through our blood. So the next topic is what are the steps that are involved in holozoic nutrition. Actually 
nutrition is a complex process which involves various steps so the first step is ingestion ingestion is the taking of organic food in the body from external environment next step is digestion when the food is going to be ingested it must be digested so digestion is the process of converting complex food into simple soluble form so that it can be absorbed by cell and utilized by the body next method is absorption absorption is the process of taking up of soluble products of digestion into the blood and this is happens if we are talking about human beings it is happens in small intestine with the help of villi that are finger like projection in the on the wall of a small intestine next process is assimilation and assimilation is the transfer of soluble food through blood and use of it by cells and all the tissues present in our body finally ejection it is a process of removal of undigested food out from the body and after all these steps one process is completed and that is known as nutrition process so after discussing all of these points we can say that nutrition is a complex process in which various small steps are involved and uh, after completion of these processes the body is going to get the nutrition so in the next segment of video we will discuss the nutrition process in amoeba and the nutrition process in human beings now we will see nutrition in amoeba amoeba is a unicellular protozoa which live in water and take algae and small protozoans as food amoeba are well known for their irregular shape and their ability to make finger like projections called pseudopodia so when an amoeba senses any food in its surrounding it starts creating pseudopodia and that surround the food completely and forms a food vacuole in the next step digestive enzymes are released in food vacuole from cytoplasm which digest the food completely now food vacuoles move in cytoplasm for absorption and assimilation and finally undigested food material is released through the food vacuole by rupturing of cell membrane now we are going to start one of the most important topic of this chapter from which a variety of questions are asked every year in cbsc board examination and the topic is nutrition in human beings in human alimentary canal from mouth to anus a variety of organs work to digest food and together they constitute human digestive system a number of organs are involved in human to digest the food which are mouth or buccal cavity salivary glands esophagus stomach liver pancreas small intestine large intestine rectum and anus i hope you still remember from your previous knowledge that alimentary canal and digestive system both are different things where alimentary canal is the passage of food in our body but the digestive system contain alimentary canal as well as digestive glands too so moving to the ingestion method in humans food is ingested through mouth or buccal cavity in buccal cavity food is broken down mechanically and chemically four different types of teeth which are incisors canine premolars and molars start acting on the food and meanwhile salivary glands release saliva which break down the starch into maltose sugar and hence digestion starts from mouth itself in human beings three salivary glands are parotid located in front of and beneath each ear submandibular situated close to the inner side of lower jaw and sublingual located below the tongue a muscular organ tongue helps to move the food in buccal cavity for proper mixing of saliva and it also pushes the food that is now in form of bolus to the next organ esophagus so the question is asked here which enzyme is present in saliva so the enzyme commonly known as salivary amylase or tylin 
which converts starch present in food to maltose sugar now from buccal cavity food moves into esophagus as you know esophagus is a muscular tube and its function is to pass the food into the stomach so no digestion occurs in esophagus the walls of esophagus represent a specific rhythmic waves of contraction called peristaltic movement or peristalsis which moves the food in stomach so the next organ in alimentary canal is stomach which is j shaped muscular bag like structure it has three main regions cardiac the anterior region which connects with esophagus middle fundus or body where food is stayed for 2 to 3 hours and digestion takes place here and the last one posterior pylorus region which connects with the small intestine the inner lining of stomach contains many gastric glands which releases gastric juices mucus and hydrochloric acid hydrochloric acid kills the microbes in stomach if they may have entered along with food so this acid also makes the medium acidic so that the gastric juices like pepsin can act on proteins and breakdown of proteins can be started in the stomach mucus is released in stomach to protect the walls of stomach from action of hydrochloric acid gastric juices pepsin helps to break down proteins and lipase helps to break down fat partially so points to be remembered in stomach is the work of hcl mucus and gastric juices pepsin and lipase now the partially digested food in stomach is called chyme which is ready to move in small intestine for further digestion small intestine is the longest part of alimentary canal ranges about 6 meter in length and it can be divided into three parts duodenum anterior one which connects to stomach and it receives the secretion of bile duct from liver and pancreatic duct from pancreas second part is jejunum and the last one is ileum where digestion process completes when the food reaches into small intestine bile juice is released from liver which contains bile salt the function of bile salt is to make the medium alkaline as it was acidic in stomach and bile helps to break down of large fat globules into smaller globules and this process is known as emulsification of fat pancreas releases pancreatic juices which contain pancreatic amylase lipase and trypsin enzymes so amylase helps to break down of complex sugar in simple sugar lipase helps to break down of fat into fatty acid and glycerol and trypsin helps to break down of proteins a small intestine also releases its digestive juices which contain peptidase and a small amount of maltase sucrase lactase and lipase enzymes which help in the com- complete digestion of food in a small intestine now the soluble part of digested food is ready to be absorbed in blood so numerous finger like projections known as villi are present on the inner lining of a small intestine you are having a knowledge of villi you have read this in the previous classes so these villi are lined by thin capillaries in which the soluble products of digestion are absorbed and supplied to each and every cell for the use in body and undigested and waste materials are then moved to the next organ so the last organ of alimentary canal is large intestine which can be divided into three parts cecum the anterior one which connects to small intestine colon the second one where absorption of water takes place and the last part of large intestine is rectum which opens outside through anus from which undigested waste is released out in the form of feces so at the end i am giving you a table and i hope this table is going to help you as it is having all the enzymes used in digestive system with their sources and work 
so i hope it will be beneficial for you to remember all of them so for today that was all i have tried to cover all the main points related with today's topics but you know students in online class there is limited time so you have to go through your books so that if something is missed by me you can get to know from your books and at the end of today's video i am going to provide you few assignments related to the topics that we discussed today so i hope you all will be able to solve them so thank you all thank you for watching take care of yourself and be safe